Welcome to BK Academy of Chess. The King's Gambit is a chess opening that begins with the moves. 1e4e5, 2f4, white offers a pawn to divert black's e pawn so as to build a strong center with d2 d4, 4 black to maintain the gambit pawn, he may well be forced to weaken his king's side. The king's gambit was one of the most popular openings for over 300 years, and has been played by many of the strongest players, in many of the greatest games, including the immortal game. Nonetheless, players have held widely divergent views on it. Francois André Danik and Philitter, the greatest player and theorist of his day, wrote that the king's gambit should end in a draw with best play, stating that a gambit equally well attacked and defended is never a decisive game. Siegbert Terash, one of the world's strongest players in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, pronounced the opening a decisive mistake and wrote that it is almost madness to play the king's gambit. Similarly, future world champion Bobby Fischer wrote a famous article, A Bust to the King's Gambit, in which he stated, In my opinion the King's Gambit is busted, it loses by force and offered his Fischer defense. A handful of grandmasters have continued to use it, including Joseph Gallagher, Nigel Short, and Alexei Fedorov. It was also part of David Bronstein opening repertoire, who almost single-handedly brought the opening back to respectability in modern play. There are two main branches. The King's Gambit accepted and the King's Gambit declined but accepting the Gambit is generally considered best. Let's first review the King's Gambit declined. Black can decline the offered pawn, or offer a counter gambit. Among the oldest counter gambits is the Penteldicus counter gambit. However, it is considered dubious because White can take the F pawn and attack with his queen on H5, giving White a good game. In the Falkbeer counter gambit, Black sacrifices a pawn in return for quick and easy development. It was once considered good for Black and scored well, but White obtained some advantage with the response D3, and the line fell out of favor after the 1930s. The Nimzowich counter gambit is a more modern interpretation of the Falkbeer. Black is not concerned about pawns and aims for early peace activity. However, White ends up with a better pawn structure and prospects of a better end game. The classical defense is a common way to decline the gambit by playing the bishop to c5. This prevents white from castling and is such a nuisance that white often expends too tempy to eliminate the bishop by moving the knight to a4, to exchange on c5 or b6, whereupon he may castle without worry. It also contains an opening trap for novices. If white takes the e-pawn, black wins a rook and may even get checkmate with the old okie-doke maneuver with queen to h4 check. There are other options, though unusual, such as the shark counter gambit advocated by Tony Miles. Playing d6 so when white plays his knight to f3, black can take the f pawn transposing to the fissure defense. However, d6 invites white to play the strong d4 instead of knight to f3. Playing the knight to f6 on black's second move, as played in the 1968 game between Bobby Fischer and Robert Wade. The keen defense, queen to h4 is also considered dubious because the queen gets chased back with g3 without any gains. Now let's take a look at the king's gambit accepted. Bobby Fischer teaches us that the refutation of any gambit begins with accepting it. There are two main continuations. The most common king's knight gambit with knight to f3 and the bishop's gambit with bishop to c4. In the bishop's gambit, white strives to development rapidly, leaving open his king as bait to seduce black's queen to h4. When the queen makes her move, white plans to gain a tempo by moving his king to f1 and striking the queen with knight to f3. In modern play, however, black usually keeps his queen at home and sends out his knight to f6. Now let's turn our attention to the King's Knight Gambit, the most popular line in the King's Gambit. The classical variation with G5 has two main continuations, the Paris attack with H4 and the extremely sharp Museo Gambit with Bishop to C4. In the Paris attack with H4, if Black plays G4 White can choose between the Algar Gambit with Knight to G5 or the Kisaritsky Gambit with Knight to E5. Playing the Algar Gambit with Knight to G5 Knight, White is prepared to sacrifice his Knight for the F7 pawn but this considered dubious by modern theory. 
Playing the stronger Kisaritsky Gambit with knight to e5 is relatively positional in nature. It was used very successfully by Wilhelm Steinitz and was used by Boris Spassky to beat Bobby Fischer in a famous game at March del Plata 1960. In the extremely sharp Museo Gambit with bishop to c4, white gambits a knight in exchange for an aggressive attack with three pieces bearing down on f7. Black can avoid the Museo by meeting the bishop to c4 move with playing his bishop to g7 and h6. The beggar defense with h6 has the idea of creating a pawn chain on h6, g5, f4 to defend the f4 pawn while avoiding the Kisaritsky gambit. Unlike the Kisaritsky gambit, black will not be forced to play g4 if white tries to undermine black's f4 pawn with h4. White has an interesting option of b3, though the main line continues with d4 grams 5 and will usually transpose to lines of the classical defense. The rarely seen Bonjasmalovsky defense with Ness Evan is worthy of noting because Mark Blufstein used it to defeat former world title finalist Nigel Short at Montreal 2007, though it has never been highly regarded by theory. The Cunningham defense with bishop to e7 is black's most aggressive option. After bishop to c4, black has bishop to h4 check. Here white has king to f1 or he can play the wild Burton gambit, or three pawns gambit, with g3 as played in the 19th century, in modern practice. However, instead of playing bishop to h4, it is more common for black to simply play knight to f6, known as the modern Cunningham. The shallop defense knight to f6 tries to hold onto the f-pawn but is considered somewhat inferior and is rarely played today. In one of the lines, white can usually obtain a crushing attack by sacrificing a rook, looking for an immediate mate with knight to d5, or later via queen to f6. The modern defense, or Abasia defense, with d5 has much the same idea as the Falk beer counter gambit, and can in fact be reached by transposition. Black concentrates on gaining peace play and fighting for the initiative rather than keeping the extra pawn. It has been recommended by several publications as an easy way to equalize, although white keeps a slight advantage due to his extra central pawn and peace activity. If white captures on d5 then black may play knight to f6 or recapture with his queen, at which it point it becomes the Scandinavian variation of King's Gambit accepted. Robert Fisher wrote in the article, A bust to the King's Gambit. In my opinion the King's Gambit is busted. It loses by force. The Fisher defense with d6, although previously known, was advocated by Bobby Fisher after he was defeated by Boris Spassky in a Kisaritsky Gambit at March del Plata 1960. Fisher then decided to refute the King's Gambit, and the next year the American Chess Quarterly published Fisher's analysis, which he called the d6 move a high-class waiting move. The point is that after d4 grams 5, h4 grams 4, white cannot continue with knight to e5, as in the Kisaritsky Gambit, and knight to g5 is unsound because of f6. This leaves the move knight to g1 as the only option, when after 6 moves neither side has developed a piece. The main alternative to d4 is bishop to c4, but this is considered inferior. Joe Gallagher writes that the NC6 option has never really caught on, probably because it does nothing to address Black's immediate problems. An obvious drawback is that the NC may 6 prove a target for the D-pawn later in the opening. Here are some other King Gambit sidelines in addition to the King's Knight and Bishop Gambit that you might be interested in exploring. The Ursini Gambit with B3, the Mason Gambit, Cares Gambit, Parnu Gambit, or Requena Gambit with NC3. The Willemsen Gambit or Steinitz Gambit with D4, the Schurich Gambit with BB5, the Lesser Bishop's Gambit or Tartakauer Gambit with B2, the Bassman's Gambit with K2, the Breyer Gambit, Hungarian Gambit, or Carrera Gambit with QF3, the Dodo Gambit with QG4, the Carrera Gambit with QH5, the Gaga Gambit with G3, the Paris Gambit with Na2, the Stammer Gambit or Leonardo Gambit with H4, the Eisenberg Gambit with NH3, and last but not least, here is one to try out on you friends, the Tumbleweed Gambit, Drunken King, or King's Own Gambit with KF2. I may look like White doesn't know what he's doing, but Black must proceed cautiously, or White can use the many open lines with surprising effectiveness. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for joining us at the BK Academy.